Target acquired. What's up guys and welcome back to Overkill Gaming, your number one source for handheld game. It's been quite a while since we talked about handheld companion and there have actually been a number of updates since my last video. So I figured we would do an updated video covering some of the new features. Many of you have also hit me up with questions about handheld companion, such as, is it safe to use with competitive shooter games? Games like Call of Duty, Destiny, Fortnite, and so forth. We'll address some of those questions in this video as well. Also, for those of you who will be purchasing the ROG Ally, I had a chance to speak with Benjamin LSR, one of the devs behind Handheld Companion, and he confirmed that they are working on a version of Handheld Companion for the ROG Ally. As many of you may have heard, Armory Crate, the software that comes with the Ally and is responsible for providing controller support and TDP controls, is still kind of a work in progress. So this is good news for anyone who may be interested in using Handheld Companion as an alternative to Armory Crate. Based on what I have heard so far about Armory Crate, I believe that Handheld Companion may offer a bit more in terms of flexibility over Armory Crate when it comes to TDP control, so it may be worth checking out. But this video isn't about the ROG Ally or Armory Crate. Today, we are focusing on the Steam Deck and how to have the best possible experience in Windows. And to achieve that, I believe that Handheld Companion is an absolute necessity. Now, before we dive in, if you guys enjoy this type of content or find it helpful and would like to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing as well so that you do not miss out on future content like this. We cover tips, tricks, and gameplay performance for the Steam Deck as well as other handhelds such as the Aya Neo and the soon to be released ROG Ally. You definitely do not want to miss out on any of it. Handheld Companion is an absolute necessity for Steam Deck gaming in Windows. It provides us with a wide array of options. It gives us the ability to emulate an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, adjust our TDP on the fly, adjust the fan curve, set up hotkeys, and more. This video will not go over every single feature of Handheld Companion, but will provide you with enough information to get you started. A quick disclaimer before we go any further. Many have asked whether or not Handheld Companion will get you banned in competitive shooter games with anti-cheats. Games like Call of Duty, Destiny, Fortnite, etc. Now this is something that I have asked the devs themselves and they do not recommend making any adjustments while playing any competitive shooter game with an anti-cheat. So if you are planning to play a game such as COD, I recommend making your adjustments before going into a game. I have personally used Handheld Companion many times while playing Call of Duty and so far have not had any issues. Having said that, I will not be making any adjustments to TDP or fan speed going forward while in a game just to be on the safe side. Now, once we're done installing Handheld Companion, it's going to ask us to restart, but before we do, I'm going to check for an update to make sure we are using the most recent version. To do this, we will launch the app, go into settings, and then click on check for update. And once we're done downloading the update, that's when we're gonna restart our system. All right, so real quick, before we hop into Handheld Companion, I have to show you how to disable Xbox Game Bar. So when launching HC, you may see a box like this pop up on the screen. It has something to do with Xbox Game Bar and it can be quite annoying. In order to prevent this from happening, you have to update Xbox Game Bar. However, if you do not want to use Xbox Game Bar, I'm going to show you right now how to disable it. So the first thing we're going to do is update it in the Microsoft Store. Once we've updated it, we will then go into our settings, click on the hamburger icon, scroll down and click on where it says gaming, and then we're going to toggle Xbox Game Bar to off. Next, we're going to click on the hamburger icon, scroll down and click on apps, click on installed apps, find Xbox Game Bar in the list and click on the three dots, select advanced options and change background permissions to never. Then we're going to scroll down a bit and click on terminate. This will make sure that Xbox Game Bar isn't running in the background. Now we'll go over my settings for Handheld Companion. I usually like to have Handheld Companion start up with Windows and run in the background. So I'm going to toggle on Auto Start Application, Open Application in Background, Closes Minimizes, Enable Desktop Profile on Start for Mouse Controls, and I also prefer the Dark Theme over the Light Theme. I also set my startup type to automatic. 
Now, if we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that we have the ability to set minimum and maximum values for TDP and also override the fan speed. On the controller tab is where we can select which controller to emulate. It gives us an option to emulate a PlayStation or an Xbox controller. Scrolling down, we have options for our desktop layout controls. This gives us the ability to configure the controller however we want when using it like a mouse on the desktop. For example, if you want to use the thumbsticks to move the mouse and scroll, you can set that up here. You can also bind buttons to keyboard keys. The profile tab is where you can create a specific controller profile for a specific game. When handheld companion detects that the game has launched, it will load the specific profile you have set up for that game. The overlay tab allows you to have a controller overlay on the screen which will mimic your movements. This is an awesome feature that will come in handy for content creators who want to demonstrate their controller actions with a controller on the screen. My favorite section is the hotkeys tab. This is where we can bind functions to the buttons on the controller. For example, I have mine set up in the following way. The steam button brings up the start menu. The three dot option button brings up handheld companions quick settings menu. L4 toggles my FPS overlay. L5 is configured to show the desktop. R4 toggles on and off the desktop layout, which is important because you do not want this enabled while in a game or else you may experience double inputs. R5 brings up my on-screen keyboard. We can also pin certain functions to the quick settings menu by clicking on the pin next to any of the quick tools, but you are limited to only nine of these functions. The quick settings menu is where we can also adjust brightness, volume, resolution, TDP, all on the fly. And now a quick note on how to use handheld companion along with the Steam user interface. Personally, I don't use Steam very often in Windows because I have a dual boot and prefer to use Steam OS to play most of my Steam games. And most of the time I tend to use the regular Steam user interface. However, I know that some of you are Windows only and play all of your games in Windows. And I know that many of you prefer the big picture UI over the normal Steam UI. And because Steam likes to take over the controller, using HC with Steam can be a bit tricky. But I will show you how I would set up HC for use with Steam. With our current setup, if we press the Steam button while in big picture mode, it will bring up the main menu as well as the Windows start menu. Also, if we press the options button, it will bring up the Steam quick settings menu along with the handheld companion quick settings menu. And I don't think any of us would want it to work like this. So what we can do is return to the hotkeys menu in handheld companion and remap the Windows start menu and the HC quick settings menu in a way that will not conflict with the Steam big picture mode. For example, I will remap the Windows start menu to the options button plus D-pad left. And I will remap the HC quick settings menu to the options button plus D-pad right. Now when we go back into Steam big picture mode and press the Steam button, it will only bring up the Steam menu on the left. And when we press the options button, it will only bring up the Steam quick settings menu on the right. Another rule of thumb whenever we are in Steam big picture mode is that we should toggle off desktop layout since we won't need any mouse movement. Also, by not doing so, it could result in double inputs. As you can see here, when pressing the D-pad up and down to navigate the menu, it skips a line. This is because the button presses are registering twice. This is what is referred to as double input. However, if we toggle off desktop layout, it no longer registers these presses twice. It's a good idea to toggle this off when in a game as well. Most of the time when people tell me that they are having controller issues in game while using handheld companion, it is because desktop layout is still enabled. There it is, handheld companion in a nutshell. Everything you needed to know to get started. And there are other features we did not even cover in this video such as gyro controls. We may leave that for a separate video. There is another huge update coming soon and we will definitely bring you up to speed on the new features included in that update. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. It's a great way to support the channel. Let us know what you guys think of Handheld Companion down in the comments. Have you tried it? Are you planning to give it a try on the Steam Deck or another handheld device? Any questions or concerns, feel free to drop those there as well. We'll be sure to respond as time permits. Until next time, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.
target acquired. 